it, by the grace of God, like you had never caught a case in the middle of this. Crazy Not serious. Like I've been yeah. to jail four times yeah. uh, with a few people in here. <laughs> oh my God. You got to duck it over there. Think you owe me right now. <laughs> Every time I'm with you, yo, it's something else. It's a fact, it's a fact, and it's nothing else. Got your hand out, you don't even need a help. Ooh, I don't need nothing else. Every time I'm with you, yo, it's something else. It's a fact, it's a fact, and it's nothing else. Got your hand out, you don't even need a help. Ooh, that's right. I don't need nothing else. That's right. King Stream Entertainment. Oceanside, California. What was it like growing up? Um, the beginning of St. Louis, East St. Louis, okay. then I moved to California. Uh, How old were you when you moved to, to California? Uh, I want to say four or five, maybe okay. six. I've known a couple of these people back here since middle school and preschool and all kind of school. Preschool? But, yeah, way back, way, way, way back. Preschool is like four, four years old, right? Okay. Yeah. So um, anyway, I'm from Oceanside. A lot of these people know me more than half. Uh, I thought I originally was going to be cutting somebody's hair and then you were going to be talking to me. While <laughs> I didn't really know all these people was Hit you with the okie doke. But um, <laughs> I'm really here because I like what you're doing with the, like, I'll be going on your page and I'll be thinking to myself, like, dang, this was my little brother's friend yeah. from way back in the day. Yeah. He has the blue check, you know what I mean, yeah. on his Instagram. And, you, you don't got to flex for me. No, I'm not. Yeah. I'm saying, no. I'm verified on Instagram. I'm dead. Ruslan KD on Instagram. No, I'm dead serious. <laughs> I was, it was big to me, yeah. you know what I mean? So I was like, shoot. We're going to get you, you the blue check, too. Take once you asked me about the, uh, you know, the, the podcast, yeah. it was hands down. I wanted to do it because I wanted to get the shop out. I wanted to sell clothes. I wanted to... to, to Basically, be shoot, shoot a part of whatever you can cuss you on here. We don't censor people on here, so you be yourself. I don't want to curse me out. Yeah. 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 This is BJ Orf, yo. BJ Orf got bars. Don't, 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 um, don't sweat BJ Orf. But no, nah, other than that, no, nah, I just want to motivate people. Like yep. I said, uh, so, so, so let's start at the beginning. Yeah, you guys moved to Oceanside, California. Oceanside, um, uh, single parent sing home, yeah, single parent home. My mom, uh, she was on drugs more or less, so and when this my, was the 90s, my, yeah. Mm, no, nah, 80s. 80s, okay. 80s, I'm old. Okay. Do I need to tell my age? I'm 41 years old. Nah, it was the 80s, 80s, 80s. I was born in 78, okay. so 80s, 90s, you know what I mean? But then, uh, long story short, I got a lot of cousins, a lot of uncles and aunties, and everybody was going one way, and I wanted to go against the grain and go the opposite way, so. So what was Oceanside like in the, in the 80s? Oh, man. Horrible. I mean, from what I see, it was just a lot of drug dealing, a lot of gang banging. I mean, I got family from 45 Crip sets, you know what I mean? Some of them are in here. Uh, we don't got to name the specific <laughs> sets. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, it was just bad, you yeah. know what I mean? But as the, now that I'm old, I realize, I thought it was the most horrible thing then. Yeah. But now I'm older, I realize, like, more than 50, 60% of black people in poverty went yeah. through that exact same thing. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't make it, you know yeah. what I mean? It's like you went through what everybody else went through. I didn't have no daddy neither. Like I ate peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for dinner too. Right. You know what right. I mean? So. Right, because this is, this is in, at the peak of the crack epidemic, at the peak of Reaganomics, right, right, the, right. The, the war on drugs, right. uh, yeah. Colin So Pro, like all the wild stuff that was happening. Um, that they make movies and series is about. I mean, it. you hear it so often, raised by the streets, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? My older brother was raised, I remember him cooking for me, coming home from hustling, cooking, doing all kind of stuff mm. while my mom was doing whatever she was doing. But she's clean now, it's all good. That's awesome. We don't got no problems. Yeah. With beef, you know what I mean? I see her every day. She came up here earlier, so <laughs> cursed everybody in the show. <laughs> That's but, uh, no, nah, I mean, it's the same story that yeah. most black, you know what I mean, yeah. people that came up in poverty got, you know what I mean? It's no different, but it's about how you channel it after right. that, you know what I mean? Right. So where did you end up going to high school? Uh, Vista High. Well, okay. I went to four different high schools. I went to Vista, I went to Rancho, I went to Oceanside, and oh, then so I graduated awesome. where the uh, yeah. the canned food store is now, or it used to be a continuation school. Okay. A year later, in 1997. Okay. Went to school, for, uh, high school, for five years. Don't judge me. Okay. Go ahead. He was, a, he, was a, he was a super duper senior. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Twenty years old. Check clock in here. So, so I know you to be a rather uh, a rather intelligent 
person from our conversation, you're very sharp, you're very well read. Was you just not into school at the time? Because I would assume you would you would have crushed it in school. Um, there was too many women at school. Okay. And that's uh, a vice of my women. I okay. mean, like most most men. Yeah. Uh, so I actually really only need 16 more units to graduate from Palomar to get a, a AA degree or whatever. Okay. For, Let's go. But I, I just don't want. I don't feel the need yeah. to go to school, really, yeah. to be honest. I, I went to Cal State, and I finessed my way onto the graduation Cal stage. State where? Cal State San Marcos. Cal San Marcos. And I technically never actually finished. I was just, I had to take an exit exam. I never took it. But I got pictures of me with the diploma <laughs> and the dean. My wife is mad at me to this day. She's like, you ain't even got your bachelor. Like, I ain't got the bachelor. For, for what? But at you this got point, the picture, right? Yeah, I got the picture, though. I got the picture, and I got the thing with no diploma in it. And just a picture of me holding it. Y'all think I'm joking. I'm so serious. So, uh, high school, you you you're not getting the best grades. You said your brother was hustling. You know, family's addicted to drugs. In the midst of it all. So what's next? Yeah. You already know. So so you told me that you never really worked like a normal job. Uh, I have, but not. I mean, I say for about three, four years. Uh -huh. Let's say I didn't have a normal job for about 13 years. Okay. 12, 13 So a very years. small window you very worked small a, a window, normal yeah. job. Yeah, yeah. And then... I've never been good with clocking in and yeah. and somebody telling you to be here at nine. I just never... That's never really been me. So right. I was hustling for a long time. Right. Uh, got my stuff together and... But go ahead. Go back into Yeah, it. so so w when we met, you were doing music and you were hustling. How did, how did the transition go from... Tage is, you know, a young uh, teen in high school, continuation school, to then you get into hustling specifically. Initially, he was like selling weed and stuff like that, which is legal now, which is kind of wild that it was illegal back then in hindsight. You know what I mean? I mean, you get all the that. hustling I was doing was is now pretty much legal. Mm -hmm. Every last one of them. Um, it's just indifferent, for, you know, like yeah. you can't sell weed on the street, but you can go to a dispensary. You mm -hmm. can't do this, but you can go to a brothel, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, basically, like I said, I, I watch family do it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, monkey see, monkey do. Mm. Basically, you watch your older cousins and older family. That's how I started rapping, yeah. watching people do it. Oh, I want to be a rapper, yeah. you know what I mean? And uh, once I figured that didn't, that didn't work out for me. Yeah. Or actually, while it, I was, was rapping, working, I feel while like. I was rapping, I was hustling. But I was realized I was taking all my hustle money and I'm putting it into music. <laughs> we traveled. I mean, you traveled a whole lot more than we did. But we went to New York. We mm -hmm. went to Philly, all on our dime, trying mm -hmm. to make this dream work. And yeah. then once I realized, man, this ain't working, mm -hmm. then that's when I really kind of went full fledged hustling. Yeah, you do, know, all hustling. Do you feel like today, these kids are coming up with YouTube? They're learning about flipping sneakers out the gate. They're learning about eBay. They're learning about so many different things. Do you feel like had you had some of that same information available to you, had, maybe you would have picked a legal hustle? No doubt. Yeah. No doubt. I think so. Yeah. So yeah. you feel like today it's a little easier maybe? If I would have went to a trade high school, because uh -huh. now you can go to, even at my daughter's school, uh, dance is uh -huh. one of her classes. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Instead of history, mm -hmm. okay, well, what do you need to learn about what happened to, to the pilgrims and stuff? You right. don't really, right. right? Right. So, so you transition from weed, and then you you transition into what they call is the oldest profession known in the world, and and you build that up <laughs> to where you was telling me some of the numbers, and you was telling me you bought a bought a crib, and bought a three hundred and thirty thousand dollar house with no job for thirteen no years. Yeah. That's I didn't think that I could do, but it, I didn't think I could get a barber shop neither, and yeah. I got it. So, yeah. um, I had a friend that was a, a real estate agent. He's uh -huh. still my friend, and uh, he kind of basically told me, you know, as long as you got the cash, mm -hmm. as long as you got the money, we can make all the paperwork happen. Mm. And uh, that was like 2008, okay. right when the recession happened. Right. And um, that's when I closed, 2008, yeah. right when the recession happened. And I kept that house for say 2008 to 2013 okay and that's when I stopped doing what I was doing because okay. I had a child and uh, the child happened to be a little girl and yeah. I believe in karma so 
And then on top of that, I had a baby mama that was threatening to call the police every other day. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? And she wasn't having <laughs> she was she was no longer having what was going on. Yeah. So, so you go so you go from essentially reaching well, kind of like a peak if we're talking illegal money, buying the house, having the you know what I'm saying, the girls, having the the the, the cars, like you was I remember you was pretty flossed out, you know what I'm saying? At one time. At, life, at one yeah. time, the chain, like you was the man. And and so you build this whole thing up. And then you said within a, I remember you telling me, you said within a six month window, you went from living in like a 3,500 square foot home to living in a motel. $330,000 house to Mount Vernon. I don't know if anybody knows <laughs> Escondido, but you get off on Escondido. I think that's when you actually said you wanted to, to, to share the story because that was, it was big to me. I lived in a quarter million dollar house with, or over a quarter million dollar house with four or five women just having it my way yeah. to literally like six months, a year later, I was living in a hotel with my child and my, and my child's mother yeah. for $40 a night, yeah. you know what I mean? And I was like, it was, that's when I realized like, oh yeah, I gotta do something, I gotta yeah. figure it out, yeah. so. Yeah, that's crazy that, 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 that you, you was at a peak mm -hmm. and then completely. That's life though, right? Yeah. You go up, you go down, you go up, you go down. I've seen a lot of people go up and stay stay up, and I've seen a lot of people go up, and, I mean, go down and stay down, but yeah, that's life. And in the, by the grace of God, like you had never caught a case in the middle of this? You had never like done any jail time, anything crazy? Not serious. Like I've been yeah. to jail four times. Yeah. Uh, with a few people in here. <laughs> oh my God. You got a ducking over there. Think you owe me right now. <laughs> nah, uh, yeah, I've been nothing serious though. I don't have no no like uh no felonies. That's the word. Yeah. No no prison time. Yeah. You know what I mean? So how did so. you make that transition? Like she say I'm a triple, honey, welcome to Trivago. Tell me who you know, who is you tripping for a follow? But all in the air like Showtime and the Apollo. Popping up your chest, the next thing you know is hollow, but well, hello. I've been swinging like some jello. You got one in the fun guy, he gets some portobello. So I guess I need some grease up on my elbow. Yeah. But now my light turned yellow. And I've been looking for the cheat code. Life don't come in a neat bowl, bringing the receipt home. But we know, we know.